What is going on everyone? My name is Anson and in this video I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to call the YouTube data API to get specific information from YouTube. Maybe you want to search for YouTube videos, you want to search for channels, and if you want to do more complicated stuff such as uh, update data on behalf of the authorized user, uh, we're going to go ahead and do stuff such as subscribing to channels using the API. Now a disclaimer, um, with the YouTube Data API, uh, there's a lot of endpoints that you can actually use with just an API key, and it doesn't require the use, user to actually log in with OAuth2. Now, some endpoints do actually require you to provide an access token, and to get the access token, you need to actually uh, authenticate using OAuth2. So, luckily, I actually had made three videos on how to integrate a Node.js and Express.js web server that allows you or the user to log in uh, to the platform with the with their Google account. And by doing that, what happens is you'll actually be able to get an access token and you can use the access token to uh, pass it in as an authoriz authorization bearer token so that we can actually make such authorized requests. But uh, if you're not worried about making any requests like that, don't worry so much and I'll mention it. I'll, I'll like distinguish the different types of requests that we'll be working with. The first few uh, API calls that we'll be making won't really uh, require OAuth2 access, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can so all you'll need to do is just get an API key and it'll just work fine. But I need to mention that because uh, I do have those three videos published already, or by the time this video is uploaded, they should be up and ready so that you can go ahead and watch it. And the code is already in the description, so it's very easy for you to just you know clone the repository, follow along with it, and you know get the access token itself just to play around with the API. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and get started uh, now that we've just talked so much. So the first thing that you'll want to do is go over to the uh, Google Cloud Console and I'm going to show you how you can create a project. I'm going to be using uh, a, an old project, not, the, not an old project, but a project that I created for the Google OAuth 2.0 uh, tutorial, but it's going to be the same, as, same exact thing. Um, it just has uh, the OAuth2 stuff enabled, but I'll show you again how you can enable that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new project. So we'll click new project over here. And I'll go ahead and call this uh, data, or not data, YouTube data API tutorial v3. Doesn't matter, you call it whatever you want. And I'll go ahead and just click create. All right, and just give it a couple seconds for it to create the project. All right, perfect. And let's go ahead and select that. So we're using this. All right, so next thing that we'll have to do is we're gonna go ahead and enable the YouTube uh, data API. So if we go to the search, I should be able to just search for the YouTube data API somewhere over here, yep, right over here, YouTube data API version three. And uh, just go ahead and click on enable. All right, and once that's done, uh, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. So it's gonna bring you to this page under this project and you're gonna go ahead and click on credentials. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and click on create credentials and you're gonna go ahead and create an API key. So you're gonna select API key. And when you do that, what's gonna happen is it'll generate an API key for you that you can copy and use for your project. Now, later on, when you need to actually enable OAuth2, all you'll, all you'll need to do is just go ahead and con uh, configure the OAuth consent screen. And I actually have a video on the uh, Google OAuth 2 tutorials. So I'm not going to do this again. So just go ahead and watch those videos on how I set up the OAuth consent screen. I'll have links in the description to show you how to actually set that up. Like I'll link you to the tutorials where you can watch it. And, uh, I'll, and it also shows you how you can create the OAuth client ID so that we can configure the client ID or not configure the client ID. You can get the client ID, get the client secret, and you can configure the redirect URL. Okay. So uh, like I said, I'm going to use the project that I created from the Google OAuth 2 tutorials. So I'll just select that one. Uh, is this the right one or is it this one? This one. I think it's this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And you can see over here, I already have the OAuth 2 stuff enabled already. Okay. But like I said, it's pretty straightforward. And the video, will, the video that I that I'll link in the description will tell you how to do it. Will tell you how to set it up. So I already have my API key here, and I'm going to go ahead and just copy it. And if this API key gets hijacked, 
you can go ahead and just delete it uh, or just regenerate it okay you can also restrict the key too um so that's something that i would recommend as well and you can also add additional restrictions as well okay but we're not going to do that for now so let's just go ahead and copy the api key and you're going to go ahead and open up your favorite http client i'm going to go ahead and use postman uh, in another video i'll show you how to actually use code to uh, hit the api but for now don't worry about that but let's go ahead and go into postman you can use you can also use curl you can use um you can use uh, any http client you want to okay and uh this is going to be uh what we're going to be using to make the api call to the youtube data api the first thing i'll do is i'll just store my api key over here so this is going to configure query parameters for me because that's how we're going to pass in the api key okay so let's go ahead and go to the data api now and one thing that i will mention is that each api request that you make is going to cost quotas and quotas you can think of a quotas like the currency that they use to uh you know uh calculate how much you know you've spent on making api calls so i would highly recommend that you consult the documentation you can go to the data api docs and click on guides and click on quota cost for api requests and it'll tell you which method for which resource uh that you're going to be calling and how much it costs for example if you wanted to work with the activities api and you want to use the list method which is just uh this one right over here this uh this one would cost one unit one quota and uh, i think each day you get about ten thousand quotas and they resets so those ten thousand quotas are pretty much free um and, but you can also request for more if you want all right so now that you know about the quota usage uh let's go ahead and call the api so the first resource and method that we'll be working with is the search resource. And this basically allows you to search for uh, information about a YouTube video channel or a playlist. And it gives you some uh, documentation on how you can actually call this. And you can also test it out too. They have like a little uh, console over here where you can test out the API. And uh, it, it's also really nice too because you can use it to show the code. Uh, so you can, you can use it to show how it's calling the API right but uh yeah, it gives you some good examples but let's go ahead and go to search list and if you want to find the endpoint all you have to do is just select the method and it'll show you the http request url so this is the url that we're going to be calling okay let's copy this and we're going to go and paste that right over here so we're going to paste it before the query the query string all right now to actually search for something specific we're going to need to use the Q query parameter. And this basically specifies the query term to search for. Um, and there's also a lot of different query parameters that you can specify. You can also narrow it down to certain things, such as if you wanted to only retrieve a particular type of resource, such as either a channel, playlist, or a video, you can do that. But let's go ahead and set this up. So let's go ahead and add more query parameters. For, so for the query for Q, I'll go ahead and search for let's let's do um Joji, one of my favorite artists. And we're gonna go ahead and narrow the type of search to video. And um let's see, let's just make sure we did this correctly. Perfect. And one one parameter that's actually mandatory is part. And part is actually going to allow you to specify what resource properties um will be included and i think there's only one different different resources will have different uh different like things that you can add to this right for example i think for this one it's only snippet so we'll go ahead and do that okay so this is what the url would look like okay and let's go ahead and click on send and let's see what happens so you can see that right over here that we have data returned from us, returned from the YouTube data API. And you can see that we have this items property, and this is an array. And this is basically just an array of objects. I don't know what the specific object type is, but if you use, if you actually use the Google, um, you, I think Google has like a bunch of libraries. If you use the Node.js one, they actually do have a feature where you can actually interact with the YouTube data API. And it'll have all the types ready for you to work with okay but for now you can see that it gives you all the types of property you can see that the snippet part this the snippet part is basically going to give you a lot of the main information that you'll need 
So you can see right over here, it gives you the actual title of the video. It gives you um, the channel title. It gives you the default. I think this is the thumbnails, the description, um, channel ID, all, all sorts of things. Okay. And it also gives you the other video, the other video research results as well. I think the max currently is, I think that currently uh, we're only getting five, but I think you can definitely change that. I think if we look at the documentation, it should say something about, let's see, let's check. Um, I think there's a way you can actually change the max amount. I'm not too sure though. If not, you'll need to use pagination. Oh yeah, there we go. Max results. And you can see that right over here, it gives you values from zero to 50. Now, I don't think if you increase the max result value, it's going to uh, cost more quota. I don't think it will. So um, you might as well uh, retrieve as many uh, data, as much data as you could possibly need from one API call. So that way you don't waste API calls, if that makes sense. Okay. But that's up to you though, on how you want to develop your application. But um, anyways, so uh, hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you understand how this works. Okay. In the next video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can use some of the other, uh, other uh, resources. Okay. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. So thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.